Um, but speaking of like lifting, do you have any like dieting or even like strengthening tips for people that are trying going into a run plan? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, another great point for, you know, people getting into the sport and I'm sorry about the freaking, Oh, you're, you're a good homie. Right. What right. time most, is it? most of you guys are listening to this on, on your phones anyway, but <laughs> what time is it there? Uh, almost five. Yeah. Just about it's a uh, golden hour in my window. You're so golden. Am I frozen now? Oh shit. Hold on. Nah, you're good homie. All right. Yeah. Dude, I'm going to just move really quick. That's Let's talk fine. about some strength training plans. <laughs> Sound good, homie. Uh, hey, what's up, Oliver? Yeah, so getting back into it, you know, strength training for me, I would say is more important early on than than doing the actual running. Reason being is running is a fickle activity. Like you can get hurt doing that almost without any any uh, warning at all. So early on, like you want to be able to have the consistency and build that base mileage. And so if you're doing six miles a week versus 10, that's not going to look like much, you know, two months down the road in your training plan. If you're, if you're doing like the work to strengthen your muscles, I can tell you from firsthand, I was just running and that was all I was doing to get better at running. I was doing workouts and, you know, rolling out a little bit afterwards, but I, I wasn't strengthening the muscles that didn't just naturally get stronger when you run. And so like your TFL or like your, your hip muscles are huge. And those, you actually pointed out like, Hey, you should be stretching those maybe a little bit better. Went to the doctor, heard the same thing, um, strengthening them, like being up at altitude and seeing the difference in fitness of, of doing the runs without the lifts plus width it's, it's night and day. Um, that's something that I would say once you're, once you're rolling, you should be doing three, two to three sessions of weight training a week. And, to me, that's nothing more than, you know, grab a band, a box of bands at Target, grab a foam roller, like a yoga mat. That's kind of like it, really. Like, if you just want to get into it, you don't even need much more. Um, just to like the band walk side to side, forward, back, hook it up to a door, put it around your hip, do some adductor stretches, because that's something you can't like naturally do on your own. And that's been huge for me to stay healthy is just hip adductors. I can't, can't stress that enough with the, the hip stretches there. Um, nutrition. Yeah. I, I've been toying around with nutrition for a while. I mean, eat and run by Scott Jarek is a great book. If you, if you wanted to see like what people do who run ultra marathons and don't eat meat, that's the book to read. Wow. Uh, I found that I used to eat a lot of pasta before running, you know, like I'll carb load before this race or I'll do I'll just eat as much spaghetti as I possibly can before Drake relays. Um, I, I think you get a lot of energy out of, out of like some natural fat. Like in the morning I'll have, I'll have coffee with like half and half or heavy whipping cream. And then I actually really been over the last like three months, just crushing like fruit cups, like applesauce, uh, mandarin oranges, peaches. And like, that's really all I'll take down. I'll take down a cup of each of those and, some coffee and then I'll go run for like two hours and I won't even get a side cramp. So I think for me, that's works. And then big sturdy meal with a lot of protein. That's, that's the best way to recover after a run in my opinion, but I don't know, man, it's been a while since I've done the workouts you've been doing the last couple of years. What do you think? Yeah. Um, but you're right. Like I remember when we were in high school, we, we would have big old carbo load pasta nights and yeah, think about it like it didn't really make much sense <laughs> i don't know why we thought it was that was the it thing like oh fuck i had a mm -hmm. shitty last split i should have had extra cup of pasta last night fuck but you're right. you're right but fruit in general that is like key like with my coach i remember my coach told me this long time ago like having fruit in between races at attract me fruit gets absorbed so quickly and that's how you can avoid cramps because like usually that cramp feeling is because something is still in your stomach or something's just not fully digested yet but like fruit it it feel it tastes good and it feel, you feel good in most case most times when you eat it so that's a good it's a good source of overall energy and but like starting with dieting like i just say i'm not a super health freak um unfortunately um i don't pay too much attention but i think just being very balanced getting all the all the foods and the food pyramid i think it's all important 
you need some healthy fats, you need your carbs, a certain, a, a, to an extent, you need a certain amount of carbs, your proteins, all of it. And like, you know, kind of staying on that three meal a day. I mean, you mentioned like the heavy protein, like using a recovery, like after your run, because your body just burns so much energy and your muscles are real tired. So protein definitely helps recovery. So you don't wake up super sore the next morning. And as I say, if you're hungry, I, after you eat run, just eat, man, like, you're going to need that energy and you need to build it back up. And one thing that people probably don't take into consideration, rather if you're a runner or not, drink a shit ton of water. We as human beings do not drink enough water. I was just telling Sam about this last week. I just started taking liquid IV because I had this problem. I don't drink enough water in this, this supplement. It's just like a powdery supplement. It's just a little, it's just to be equivalent to like one pack is like three bottles of water. And that kind of in a way, helped me kind of stay on track of like staying hydrated. And I feel I don't get as much headaches. I feel a little bit like, you know, relaxed when I run because I feel like I'm a little, little I'm more hydrated, essentially. Yeah. Um, but, but there's one thing I don't recommend is don't eat like a full meal before run because that's how you get uh, cramps. Like I can't, I'm not going to go to like Texas Roadhouse, get a steak and some mashed potatoes and veggies and then go on a run an hour later. I probably you're probably not going to have a good time. <laughs> Dude, uh, that's that's really a good point. Um, even even at Iowa at the collegiate level, I'm gonna throw a shout out to to Caleb Wilfong here. But we were like doing a preseason, uh, like 6K. You know, like hey, we'll invite some local D3 schools and we'll just like hop on the course and do like a preseason meet. And like you know, Caleb, full ride scholarship guy, like 407 miler, and so he's not really taking it too seriously. But it was probably 115 degrees out with like 100% humidity, and he rolled up like having eaten left like a whole meal of leftover like chow mein about Ooh. like 40 minutes before the gun went off and i was like running by him as he was just vomiting all over himself in the middle of the race so if you guys want a real life example of eating too much food it's <laughs> oh my it's gosh. real um, oh dude also you mentioned if you're hungry eat after a run i do want to push back a little bit on that um i think okay what you're putting into your body is so important and you know, like they say, don't go to the grocery store hungry. It's like a saying, I think same thing for your, your body's nutrition. When you get back from like a hard workout or, Hey, maybe I fasted this morning and worked out and now I'm fucking starving. Just, I don't know. You burn like between five and 600 calories an hour, just on an easy run. It doesn't take, it takes a lot to put in an hour of running. It does not take a lot to put in 600 plus calories. It's like a, small fry and a burger from mcdonald's so time and a place definitely don't not eat the foods you like but i i would just be cautious everybody's like oh man you're gonna be you're running you're probably gonna be in such good shape and then if it doesn't happen as quickly as you want it to you're like man it must just be running's not for me but you got to keep in mind you, your output and your input like you're probably burning three thousand calories a day if you're doing an hour of easy running with your daily calorie burning as is maybe a little more with your metabolism going up, but just make sure you're putting the right stuff in and you'll find out why like very quickly. If you're, if you're just getting into the sport. That's true. That's true. You can't just eat anything. You do have to be conscious. And if you're eating much a junk ass food um, throughout the week, don't be surprised if you'll be like ass when you run. Yeah. I mean, simple as that. Uh, I want to talk about my tips for strength and strength chain. You gave an example of using band stretches, hundred percent agree. I think band exercises, um, is a good way to relieve like stress on your joints. The same with like water running. I mean, just like running in a pool and not like actually touching the ground or even touching the ground is still less stress on your, on your muscles and joints versus like actually running on the streets. Those are good things to incorporate in terms of strength building because it's resistance training as well. Um, in terms of weightlifting, I think it's, yeah, you're right. I think it's important to incorporate it early on. My reason being is it's a way to strengthen your muscles to avoid risk of injury. So I mean, to minimize the risk of injury, um, cause like there'll be times where like, I'll be on a run, I feel kind of sluggish. And then later that week I have a leg day and I do some, get some squats in, get some deadlifts in, and then other leg strengthening exercises. Believe it or not, like the next day, my legs feel a little bit less, you know, sluggish. And it's just like you're developing that power and overall muscle endurance through strength training as well. So I think that kind of plays into a role on how you run. 
and like I said, mix it up, man. Incorporate some low reps, high reps, and that would that can definitely help you. If like you're incorporating some high rep um, um, lift lifts, that could help with your muscle endurance. Some low some low low rep lifts that could help with your power and like your kick. Let's say it's the final 200 meter stretch. Your legs they they've been squatting 200 plus pounds, um, depending how much you can lift. And you've been doing those short reps and bam, that's right there. That's when it comes into play. Like you got the, you got the power, you can lift the heavy weights. Now, can you lift through the paint? Can you go through and finish strong? Cause there's plenty of good runners out there. And sometimes it's that kick that they just get, they get, they get beat. And so I think just incorporating any strengthening is important, is important. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, to speak to that, like if you're building strength in, in areas where you're not really able to build that strength on a run, like if you can take the outside source of, Hey, I'm doing band exercises. I'm doing single leg squats, glute bridges, just to strengthen these legs and make it easier to, to do like a single leg squat. It's basically what a run is just a bunch of single leg squats. Then you're going to be, you're not going to fatigue as easily in the areas that normally would. And so like what happened with me when I was doing all this running for the marathon, my, my TFL was getting super tight and I wasn't doing the work to strengthen or stretch it out. So what it would do is it would, it would just get super tight and pull everything over to the side. And now I'm over using all these other tendons and stuff that I, that just stack up. And I thought I had like a hernia. I thought I had like dislocated my hip, but it was really just because I had one tight muscle that threw at literally everything else off. And if I had just strengthened it and stretched it appropriately, which is what I'm doing now, you know, I can handle being in Lakewood running 40 plus miles a week at 5,500 feet, it just elevation and, and feel a lot better doing it than I ever did running in Iowa. So I think like the kick's super important, but if you're somebody who's out there just trying to run and get the miles in, that's why it's so important. So you can do the mileage, you can like do the running that you want to do. And if you're somebody that wants to race and kick ass in a 5k or, or whatever it is, like the fast twitch muscle, that stuff will build so much quicker if you've got the strength, like AJ saying. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Hi, thanks for watching the clip. If you're interested for the full episode, go to the description for the full episode link. Or if you're interested in more content clips, feel free to check out my channel for all the clips available. Thank you again for watching and make sure to like, subscribe, and share.